Here are the top stories for today, July 20, 2020. President Duterte signs a law allowing the president to set the class opening during state of calamity or emergency. Chief Presidential Legal Counsel Sal Panello accuses CBCP of pressuring the Supreme Court on Anti-Terrorism Act. NBA base in Bulacan collapses as its 83 supporters withdraw their support. And the mega quarantine facility in Nueva Ecija is set to open next week. Good day, I'm Rom Dufo. Welcome to PNA Newsroom. Our top story, President Duterte has signed into law a bill allowing the chief executive to set the opening of classes at any date in case of a state of calamity or emergency. The new law signed by President Duterte on July 17 empowers the president, upon recommendation of the Secretary of Education, to set at any date the opening of classes in the entire Philippines or in selected affected areas in times of state of calamity or emergency. Republic Act 11480 amended Republic Act 7797, which set the opening of classes as early as the first Monday of June, but not later than the last day of August. It covers all basic education schools, including foreign or international schools in the Philippines. It also allows the conduct of Saturday classes for elementary and secondary levels. A locally made RT-PCR test kit is now ready for commercial use. This, as the health department gave the go signal to use the UP-developed Gen Amplify RT-PCR detection kit, which was funded by the Department of Science and Technology, or DOST, and manufactured by Manila Health Tech, Incorporated. Last April, the Food and Drug Administration, or FDA, approved the commercial use of the kit, but was later recalled after it was discovered a very minor de defect. Last July 10, the DOH said the deficiency has been addressed. The DOH assures that the performance of the kit will be regularly monitored. The DOST has approved the clinical trials for the local herb Lagundi against COVID-19. The project aims to determine if Lagundi can provide symptomatic relief for mild COVID-19 patients without comorbidities. It also aims to determine if Lagundi can decrease the number of patients who progress from mild to moderate or severe case. Lagundi tablet or syrup is a proven bronchodilator for the treatment of cough. Several studies have also explained Lagundi's antipyretic, analgesic, anti-inflammatory and antiviral activities. Because of these pharmacologic properties, the U.S. Secretary for Donato de la Peña said Lagundi seems a suitable choice for the symptomatic treatment of COVID-19 patients. The project would run for five months. Target date of implementation is on August 1 as soon as they get the FDA clearance. Malacanang hit critics for only paying attention for the increase in COVID-19 cases in the country while ignoring the rise in recoveries and decline in deaths. Presidential spokesperson Harry Roque said he found it unfortunate how people fail to see how the spike in cases is due to aggressive testing. If it were not for the community quarantines imposed nationwide, Roque said the country would have reached 3 million COVID-19 cases. He said the national government has been serious in looking at science in making decisions such as the country's case doubling rate the utilization of critical care facilities, and the case fatality rate which now stands at 2.7%, which is far lower than the global average of 5.5% as of July 19, Rocky said. The government has extended the mandatory installation of motorcycle safety barriers for another week. This is to give riders enough time to install either of the two barriers that pass the safety standard, the Bohol prototype, and the ANCAS design. The National Task Force Against COVID-19 approved the recommendation of, to extend the original deadline from July 19 to 26. Motorists have earlier asked for an extension to ensure that their compliance conforms with the safety standards set by the task force. Joint Task Force COVID Shield Commander Lieutenant General Guillermo Eliazar said they are hoping that the two-week grace period is more than enough for motorists. Eliazar said they will continue to warn those who have not complied and will also continue to apprehend motorists 
for other violations. The Presidential Communications Operations Office is pushing to have the Freedom of Information Bill included in President Duterte's list of urgent measures this year. PCOO Assistant Secretary Chris Ablan said the agency is boosting efforts to implement access to information at the local level. In 2016, President Duterte signed an executive order on the implementation of the FOI. However, the measure remains pending in Congress. Among the salient features of the bill are crafting a mechanism that will refer and transfer requests to appropriate agencies that should address the said request and creation of a records management system. An oversight body or the FOI Commission will also be established along with the creation of a Central Appeals and Review Committee or CARC for all FOI compliant agencies. The Office of the Ombudsman will also have the power to review the decisions of the CARC. RC. Meanwhile, the PCOO, in partnership with the Department of Information and Communications Technology, or DICT, launched the Logging Handa Unified website in its beta version. It harmonizes all information from different sources and gives the general public easier access to information. The Logging Handa Unified website will be designated as an official platform for all COVID-19 related matters. The website features the 4K, Kalusugan, Kabuhayan, Kaayusan, Kinabukasan. Kalusugan provides epidemiological data of COVID-19 cases, COVID-19 case maps, advisories, and issuances from the Department of Health. Kabuhayan tab contains direct links to other government programs which are relevant to jobs, cash aid, and other economic advisories and safety nets. Kaayusan tab provides practical information for interzonal and intrazonal guidelines timeline of government policies and actions, as well as dismiss disinformation, which debunks unverified reports and other forms of disinformation. And lastly, the Kinabukasan tab contains a list of government projects which aims to help the country rise as one. The website can be accessed through loginghanda.gov.ph, weheelasone.gov.ph, and covid19.gov.ph. The Anti-Red Tape Authority, or ARTA, urges the public to assert their right to a transparent and efficient government service through a properly implemented citizen's charter. It is an official document that communicates, in simple terms, the information on the services provided by the government to its citizens. The citizen's charter shall be the basis for establishing accountability in the delivery of government service, which is stated in the implementing rules and regulations of RA 11032, or the Ease of Doing Business and Efficient Government Service Delivery Act of 2018. ARTA Director General Jeremiah Bellica said a citizen's charter is required of every government office, big or small, because it reflects all the services being offered, fees to be paid, requirements needed to be submitted, and most of all, the processing times per service. All government agencies are set to submit their revised citizen's charter to the agency on July 25. Another batch of overseas Filipino workers or FWs who died from the coronavirus disease and other causes in Saudi Arabia arrived Sunday in Pasay City. Meanwhile, the government remains committed to help displaced OFWs regain their jobs. More on this from Chris Chris Mundo. The government repatriates another batch of OFW remains from Saudi Arabia. The caskets arrived at the Ninoy Aquino International Airport at around 1 p.m. on Sunday. Of the 88 remains, 28 are OFWs from Damam, 11 from Jeddah, and 39 from Riyadh in Saudi Arabia. About 90% of the dead bodies will be cremated immediately with consent from the OFW's relatives, while relatives who refuse to cremate their deceased families are allowed to bury the bodies within 24 hours and should not conduct public viewing during burial. The immediate families will receive a basic financial package amounting to 20,000 pesos. OWA members will receive death and burial benefits with a college scholarship for OFW dependents. One or two batches of OFWs who died while working abroad are also expected to be repatriated soon. 
Meanwhile, some 100,000 OFWs affected by COVID-19 pandemic are entitled to the one-time cash aid from Doles Abot Kamay Ang Pagtulong or ACAP program. The financial aid is intended for displaced land-based and sea-based workers as well as returning workers who are stranded in the Philippines. For OFWs who lost their job due to the pandemic, the government said it will exhaust all means to help them go back to their work. Labor Secretary Silvestre Bellio said the government is able and ready to engage with foreign governments with new policies on migrant workers with regard to safety and health measures against the deadly virus. He also raised the possibilities that OFWs could be rehired by economies that are fast recovering. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Chris Crismundo. Still to come, Sal Panelo accuses CBCP of pressuring the Supreme Court on Anti-Terrorism Act. An NPA base in Bulacan collapses as its 83 supporters withdrew their support. More on these from the PNA Newsroom continues. Tandaan ang tamang paraan ng paghuhugas at paglilinis ng kamay upang makaiwas sa iba't ibang karamdaman. Basain ng tubig ang mga kamay at sabunin. Unang sabunin ang mga palad at ang likod ng mga kamay. Kuskusin na maigi ang pagitan ng mga daliri at maging ang mga kuko. Isunod ang pagitan ng mga hinlalaki at kuskusin ng paigot ang mga dulo ng mga daliri sa magkabilang palad. Banlawang mabuti ang mga kamay sa malinis na tubig at patuyuin ang mga kamay gamit ang single-use towel o air dryer. Basta't sama-sama at laging handa, kaya natin to. Isang paalala mula sa DOH, PCOO, KBP at nang himpilang ito. Alamin ang tamang paraan ng pag-ubo upang mapigilan ang paglaganap ng coronavirus disease 2019. Ugaliing magdala ng panyo o tissue. Kung uubo o babahing, Takpan ang buong ilong at bibig gamit ang panyo o tissue. Kung walang dalang panyo o tissue, maaaring gamitin ang braso na pantakip. Kung nakararamdam na kailangan umubo o bumahing, agad na dumistansya sa mga tao sa paligid. Huwag dumura kung saan-saan, gumamit ng tissue at itapon sa basurahan. O galiin ang paghuhugas ng kamay at paggamit ng alcohol o hand sanitizer upang mamatay ang mikrobyo. Basta't sama-sama at laging handa, kaya natin to. Isang paalala mula sa DOH, PCOO, KBP at nang himpilang ito. Chief Presidential Legal Counsel Sal Panelo accused the Catholic Bishops Conference of the Philippines or CBCP of using its religious influence to pressure the Supreme Court to decide against the Anti-Terror Act of 2020. The CBCP expressed support for petitions questioning the controversial law, especially the manner by which it was a fast track in Congress while Filipinos were grappling with the pandemic. Panelo said the CBCP appeared to have violated the doctrine of the separation of church and state as mandated by the 1987 Constitution. Even if it did not violate the Constitution, he explained that it echoes the false narrative of critics and detractors who claim that it sends a chilling effect on those exercising freedom of speech. Panelo agreed with the CBCP that it is one thing to be actually involved in a crime and another thing to be merely suspected or accused of committing a crime. He also said that it contains safeguards protective of the basic liberties of those arrested and detained, as well as deterrence against possible abuses by law enforcement agents. At least 10 petitions have been filed against the anti-terror law before the High Court. Philippine Ambassador to the U.S. Jose Manuel Rombaldes underscored the importance of the Anti-Terrorism Act, saying the previous Human Security Act of 2007 has been woefully ineffective in addressing the terrorist threats in the Philippines. Romualdez told American lawmakers that Manila's new anti-terror law mandates the protection of human rights at all times. He said the law provides significant safeguards to prevent abuses, including warrantless detention. President Duterte signed the anti-terror bill into law last July 3, despite opposition from several sectors over fears of abuses. 
Over a hundred supporters of the communist New People's Army surrendered to the government and withdrew their support from their cause in Bulacan and Nueva Ecija. Marita Muaje with more. The communist terrorist mass base in Bulacan crumbled after 83 supporters withdrew their support from the Communist Party during a ceremony at Malolo City on Thursday. The majority of the former rebels are indigenous people who were coerced to support the New People's Army at the borders of Central Luzon, Calabarzon, and National Capital Region. Major General Arnulfo Marcelo Burgos Jr., commander of the Philippine Army's 2nd Infantry Division, assured the people that they are ready to deploy every asset to end this insurgency. In Surigao del Sur, government forces foiled the plan of the NPA to burn the Dep Ed Indigenous People's School in Lianga early Saturday. This was in response to information from residents on the supposed plan of NPA rebels to burn the school in Sitio Simuwao, Diatagon. The school for the Manobo tribe in the area was built in early May this year and was completed this month. Meanwhile, at least 63 supporters of the CPP-NPA vowed loyalty to the government in a ceremony held in Barangay Maligaya, Gabaldon, Nueva Ecija on Friday. Those who renounced support to the communist terrorist groups were 42 members of Alianza na mga magbubukid na nagkakaisa, one member of Milisyang Bayan, and 20 members of the Comiteng Larangan Guerrilla Sierra Madre. Lieutenant Colonel Reandro Rubio, commander of 91st Infantry Sinagtala Battalion, told the surrenderers that the government troops are always there to help and support them to the fullest level. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Marita Moahe. An alleged top leader of the Communist Two People's Army in Caraga region was killed in an encounter according to the Army's 401st Infantry Brigade on Sunday. The Army identified the alleged NPA leader as Marcelino Navarro, alias Marcing, current Deputy Secretary and Head of Education and Propaganda of the Northeastern Mindanao Regional Committee of the NPA. Tampos was among those killed in an encounter last July 7, but his dead body was recovered only on Sunday during security operations in Andap Valley Complex in Barangay Diatagon, Lianga, Surigao del Sur. This was in response to information from residents on the supposed plan of NPA rebels to burn the newly constructed Dep and Indigenous People's School in Sitio Simuwao, Diatagon. In Davao Oriental, an NPA leader was killed in a firefight with government troops in Lupon Town on Friday. The Army's 28th Infantry Battalion said the encounter resulted in the death of a certain Prince Wendell Olofernes, the Secretary of the Guerrilla Front 18, and the apprehension of suspected rebel Godofredo Quesada Gallo. The firefight broke out after the 23IB uh, responded to a report from residents about the presence of armed NPA rebels in Barangay Maragatas, Lupon. The Philippine Army says some 124 terrorists were killed in 279 armed encounters against communist and local terror groups in the first semester of 2020. Army Commander Lt. Gen. Gilbert Gapay said 95 others were captured while 422 firearms were seized from these operations despite the challenges posed by COVID-19. Gapay lauded his field commander's further performance and the efforts of various government agencies and other sectors in the surrender of 1,705 terrorists. Gapay said the series of losses and the enactment of the anti-terrorism law would hasten the defeat of the terrorist groups. Children who are beneficiaries of the Pantawid Pamilyang Pilipino Program of Four Peace in Central Visayas have showcased their creativity and artistry while staying at home for strict community quarantine. Through the Likhanang Bata Para Sa Bata, region-wide advocacy of the Department of Social Welfare and Development, Four Peace children show their creativity through various social media. Seven children deemed the future of visual artists used vivid colors and broad strokes in creating their masterpieces. Other children also showed their talent in poem composition and storytelling, while other Four Peace recipients also showcased their talent in composing songs that evoke emotions. To encourage the children to join, DSWD7 sent the mechanics of the program through text messages or social media platforms. 
The children in turn submitted their entries through videos or photos and sent via messenger or email. In Zamboanga del Sur, the Philippine Army's 1st Cavalry Battalion held a two-day leadership training to dissuade Subanan youths from joining the ranks of the communist terrorists in New People's Army. The two-day leadership training for indigenous people's youths as well as the tribal leaders started Friday in Barangay de Porrehan, Bayog Town. Barangay de Porrehan serves a passageway of the NPA from this province of Zamboanga del Norte. Up next, Macau and two more countries have already lifted the inbound travel ban on Filipinos and the mega quarantine facility in Nueva Ecija is set to open next week. The PNA News returns after these reminders. Alamin kung paano ang tamang pagsusuot ng surgical mask. Una, hawakan ng mask sa strap at siguruhin natatakpan nito ang inyong bibig at ilong. Tandaan, ang may kulay na bahagi ng mask ang dapat nasa labas. Ito lamang ang tamang paraan ng pagsuot nito. Ihulma ang nose piece o maliit na metallic strip ayon sa hugis ng inyong ilong. Iwasan ang paghawak sa inyong ilong at bibig. Kung marumi na ang mask, hubarin nito gamit ang strap at itapon nito sa isang basurahan. Siguruhin ang maayos na paghuhugas ng kamay gamit ang sabon at tubig. Ang surgical mask ay dapat gamitin ng mga pasyenteng may sakit sa baga o mga taong mayroong ubo, sipon at lagnat, mga nag-aalaga sa mga may sakit, at mga healthcare at frontline workers. Maaari ring magsuot nito kung kayo ay pupunta sa matataong lugar. Basta't sama-sama at laging handa, kaya natin to! Isang paalala mula sa DOH, PCOO, KBP at ng himpilang ito. Macau, Croatia, and Senegal territories have already lifted the inbound travel ban on Filipinos subject to medical protocols on arriving passengers. On the other hand, 69 countries and territories have still not allowed entry in their borders. Kazakhstan was added to the list of countries that give entry exemption to Filipinos and Qatar has updated its restriction as it now allows transit. Moreover, Senegal has opened its outbound borders. As of July 19, 139 countries now allow Filipinos to return to the Philippines subject to flight availability and other special arrangements. With a lifting of inbound restriction in the Philippines effective August 1, the DFA advises the public to always check with the airlines ahead of travel dates that will be used as well as with the relevant embassies or consulates before departure or before booking a ticket. Senator Sonia Agara is pushing for the inclusion of pandemics, epidemics, and other health emergencies in the subjects for primary and secondary schools in the Philippines. Angara has filed Senate Bill 1674 mandating the inclusion of pandemics, epidemics, and other public health emergencies or crises as part of the curriculum of all primary and secondary schools. Angara notes the experience of the Philippines with the COVID-19 pandemic, particularly on the behavior of many Filipinos and in spite of the dangers on their health, leaves a lot to be desired. He said one of the ways to ensure that people behave properly during a health emergency is to educate them about the do's and don'ts while they are young. The Education Department will be tasked to consult with the Department of Health, the National Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Council or the NDRRMC and other institutions in crafting the age and level appropriate curriculum. In Nueva Ecija, the Drug Rehabilitation Center in Fort Magsaysay that has been designated as a quarantine facility for those who test positive for COVID-19 is targeted to be operational next week. The facility has more than 500 air-conditioned rooms which will be allotted for COVID-19 positive patients and medical staff. To be manned by the Bureau of Quarantine, the facility will provide patients with 24-7 medical care and assistance, free meals, and free Wi-Fi connection. 
The government has converted major facilities into quarantine centers to avoid congesting hospitals and to prevent transmission of the virus in the communities. Isolation Czar and Public Works Secretary Mark Villar earlier reported over 50,000 beds in Ligtas COVID centers and nearly 3,200 beds in We Heal as one Mega Ligtas centers. Villar also said the government would put up 50 additional quarantine facilities in the next three weeks. Here now is the latest in our community billboard. The Provincial Environment and Natural Resources Office in San Fernando City, Pampanga is closed until July 26 for disinfection. This after Penro confirmed that an employee has tested positive for COVID-19. The scheduled closure might be extended depending on the result of the tests of the Penro personnel. Meantime, Penro will continue to deliver its services online such as through email and social media. Meanwhile, the Mindanao Development Authority or MINDA, in partnership with the Department of Agriculture and the local government of Bukidnon, is gearing for Mindanao Vegetable Derby slated in August this year. The event will culminate on the first week of December to coincide with the Bukidnon's hosting of the first ever vegetable festival in the tribal areas of Talakag, Impasugong, Sumilao and Lantapan. Interested vegetable growers may get in touch with the Minda office. The deadline for the submission of intent to participate will be the last week of July. Meanwhile, Petron has extended its fuel subsidy for participating vehicle units in the Free Ride Service for Health Workers program until July 31. The extension follows the decision of the government to extend the GCQ over Metro Manila until July 31. The program aims to ferry frontline health workers to hospitals and medical communities daily. Meanwhile, St. Luke's Medical Center announced today it is no longer accepting suspected and probable COVID-19 cases. This after both hospitals in Quezon City and Bonifacio Global City reached full capacity in all intensive care units. St. Luke's has encouraged patients to temporarily seek treatment elsewhere. The Clark International Airport Corporation is set to build what may be the country's tallest airport control tower. The 54-meter tower will upgrade the airfield's ground lighting system at the emerging airport complex within the year. The control tower at Mactan Cebu International Airport is 30 meters high, while the one at the Ininoy Aquino International Airport, or Naia, is measured about, at about 40 meters. CICA President Aaron Aquino said the projects are expected to improve Clark's air traffic control system even as a new terminal building is slated to become fully functional by January 2021. Its construction along with the upgrading of the airfield ground lighting system are both in conformity with the master plan of the Clark International Airport. Let's take another look at today's biggest stories. President Duterte signs a law allowing the president to set the class opening during state of calamity or emergency. Chief Presidential Legal Counsel Sal Panelo accuses CBCP of pressuring the Supreme Court on Anti-Terrorism Act. NPA base in Bulacan collapses as its 83 supporters withdraw their support. And the mega quarantine facility in Nueva Ecija is set to open next week. Thank you for watching another episode of the PNA Newsroom. To check more news content, visit our webpage or follow the Philippine News Agency's Facebook and Twitter accounts. For more news about the government, how it serves Filipinos, look for these hashtags on all our social media platforms and websites. We are shown on the pages of the PCOO and its attached agencies. Also watch us on television on PTV4 and IBC13. And that the daily dose of the biggest stories that you need to know from PNA Newsroom. I am Rom Dufo. Have a good day and stay safe.